breakfast to you all for it is thursday it is thursday my friends it is not on friday this week because it is my wedding anniversary 14 years i have been pledged to the same lady it's technically 21 i think something like that uh where i've been pledged to the same partner in crime uh and uh, we are celebrating it this weekend she's making me go to scotland to enjoy myself which is absurd because we're on a very tight schedule we are on the road to ff16 and we have a lot of tasks to complete by that point one of them was the new final fantasy extreme we failed <clears throat> we failed spectacularly as uh, it, it turned out to be extraordinarily hard compared to what usually is the plan for extremes typically we finish them in an afternoon maybe the next day something along those lines but that was not to be the case today no it was not uh, and uh, it still stands after two days of prog and it has very little health left but we ran out of time unfortunately and after this we're going to be jumping into guild wars 2 to finish off living world season 4 uh which has been an experience to say the least so stream wise i will be back on tuesday we won't be in the morning we're driving back tuesday morning early but we will get back but we're probably going to be doing something with the final fantasy 14 race to world first savage race Mm, on that day so it's very exciting times for all of next week and then we'll be jumping into crisis core and the ff7 remake which have been promising for so damn long uh we will be getting there we will be making that journey pretty good but after this stream we will be finishing living world season four and uh it's sure it promises to be an epic conclusion despite the <clears throat> interesting end <laughs> to its penultimate episode <laughs> interesting end to its penultimate episode spoiler free as always but of course we're here to have some fun and make sure that the people don't go without their drama uh because we don't want that in our lives and this name here i have in front of me strikes me as very very interesting uh because i will never miss up an opportunity to rip on these <sighs> oh the lala fell mafia if you have any tales you wish to share of us as the weird and wonderful things that happen to you in the online world uh then feel free to share them with us at the um at preachgaming at gmail.com so you can send them into us there put it in the wrong box okay if i believe that capital a there everyone's gonna go insane so i won't do that i won't do that and our names, who will be probably our Lalafell Mafia here, are going to be Kennethal, our wonderful website supporters who enable this show to happen. Uh, Chris, is, I assume this is Crystal. I'm really sorry if, uh, I assume you've gone for Crystal, but it's actually Chrysatal. But I feel like it's supposed to be Crystal. Uh, but I'll, I'll read it as Chrysatal regardless. Enos is going to be here, and I've no doubt Bex is treating Enos with the respect he deserves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same for Imbued. <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, that uh, Bex will be treating Enos with all due respect. <laughs> Remember, Enos, I see you in the chat. I did not pick anything. So, our first tale, we've actually got stories here from uh, FF14, Guild Wars 2, and World of Warcraft. That's exactly what we're looking for on our Project MMO journey. Uh, we haven't seen any Destiny dramas coming yet. We'd love to see some of those because, of course, it doesn't matter the game. People be crazy as soon as they pick up that mouse and keyboard. Uh, so, let's get rocking and rolling here. Hello, Preacher and the audience. I hope you're doing well and that Ben is happy and having tummy scratches. Actually, as a side note, I didn't mention this to the stream at all today. Uh, ben is really pissed off because the suitcase is out. And in Ben's mind, that means somebody's leaving and he doesn't like that very much. But little does Ben know, he's coming with us, Scotland. So right now, he's a grumpy little fucker because he thinks I'm going away again because I only just got back from Sweden. So he thinks I'm leaving. Uh, but little does Ben know that he's actually coming with us to explore the fields of Scotland. And he will find out tomorrow. And I always, I'm, I, I'm kind of mean in a little way, but it's like the excitement that I see when he does it. So we're going to pack everything. We're going to put it all in the car. So he's like really annoyed because somebody's leaving and he knows somebody's going away. And only when we're about to leave will I pick up his lead 
and that's when he realizes he's coming with us i guarantee you he like almost pisses himself every time <laughs> it's so fun it's so funny like loses his fucking mind when he's like oh my god i get to go oh my fucking shit i actually get to go with you yeah i'll, I'll try and record it if i remember and emma's not stressing me out because emma gets very stressed out with traveling i'll try and film it but when i grab the lead and he realizes he's coming with us. He loses his fucking mind. It's so good. Anyway, a little, little dis distraction there. But uh, in answer to your question, you would not be able to tell that Ben is very, very ill. Uh, the medication they give him is great. Obviously, he's on borrowed time. Uh, it's, it's, it's not medication that stops cancer, unfortunately. Uh, but as he is, he's fine. Uh, we will never let Ben suffer. Uh, before we begin, I feel a degree of guilt and innocence at the same time. So I will leave this story up to your judgment, ladies and gentlemen. Judgment has been requested. But we will withhold our gavels for now until we understand the case. We must hear the case before we can render judgment on our would-be author here. Now, I'm in the unfortunate position where it seems that through mysterious circumstances, mostly being young and stupid, and ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time, I could easily create around 20 drama time stories. Feel free. Some may even be too depressing to actually submit. I don't know. We've had some depressing shit on the show. Like some really depressing shit. Especially when I didn't vet the stories before we read them. I used to pick them based on titles and stuff. And then it ended up into like yeah, bad shit. Although I think in the history of Drama Time, there's only been about five stories that I was like, we can't finish this story because it got really dark. I think it's only happened about five times where I was like, I'm sorry, we can't read anymore. It's getting really bad. Uh, so I've selected one of the lighter ones to not create a Sag train in Twitch chat. No, they're just mad. I hope you enjoy my little tale. Our story begins with an idea. Oh, oh. it was called Project MMO. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Where someone wanders through each and every of the top MMOs. It begins with WoW and then it moves to another MMO like FF14. And it's a thrilling MMO such as XCOM 2. And then to other MMOs like Guild Wars 2. And then even better MMOs like Resident Evil 4. And finally, to the best MMO, Destiny 2. Smirk, go fuck yourself, Mike. I don't need this, you know. I've been wiping all day. I've, been, I've, I've literally been wiping on bosses all day. In all seriousness, I think it's a great project. And at the end of 2022, I want to spread my wings a bit more from my home MMOs. That was part of the idea of the project. I'd always heard about this particular MMO, but never tried it. For the same reason as you, Breach. It was the shitty trash weeb game. <laughs> the elusive Emmett Selk name was floating around my Discord as everyone and their non- uh, Everyone and their nan decided to venture into the world of Eorzea. Actually, it's a theorist. To live out their seediest fantasies. I mean, great fantasies, surely. So I installed it. I download it. Without a problem. I made, you downloaded FF14 without a problem. That's actually a fucking... That's actually pretty awesome. It's It, it can be really tricky. <laughs> it's not as bad as Guild Wars. Uh, but <laughs> downloading FF14 can be a fucking issue sometimes. <laughs> um... And made my character. I made a Viera, of course. For the cultural reasons. Well. Oh. For cultural reasons. A Viera. Yeah, you empathize with the Viera for cultural reasons. And the fact that aside from the obvious bunny features, they actually look better as humans than actual humans in that game. Where Enix knew what they were doing with that one. I... I mean, I, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. I don't like any of them, so it's fine. As soon as I loaded in, I appeared in Limsa Liminsa, the bastion of fun. Supposedly, I'd always heard that the community was overwhelmingly friendly and welcoming. I knew that idea that was somewhat crushed within five minutes as a Lalafell Mafia sat on a park bench. Shouting insults at people's glams and generally being obnoxious pieces of shit. Now, yes, look, generally speaking, most of the population is very welcoming and very friendly in FF14. But Lalafells don't adhere to that mold. They don't fit in anything. 
They're fucking garbage. They're trash. They're actual human waste. So while everyone else is a wonderful, wonderful person, filled with joy and happiness, and wants nothing more than accept you into their bosom, the Lalafels, on the other hand, are disgusting toad people who can't even get a chair right. Embarrassing. And as sooner or later, they will burn in an inferno of devil hornies. That's what's going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, I suppose you could take the players out of World of Warcraft, but you can't take the WoW out of the... You're blaming Lalafels on Warcraft players? No. No, 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 no. Not all the WoW players are playing Lalafels. No, you can't... No, Lalafels are not a WoW problem, okay? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, fuck that. No, 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 no. You people. Again, it's like racism. I don't know where it comes from. I don't encourage it whatsoever. I, of course, started with a Realm Reborn at first. I was actually someone who came from Guild Wars 2, ESO, and World of Warcraft. I hugely enjoyed the job system in FF. Just being able to play everything whenever you wanted to on a single character. It was like a whole new world. It is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't it. Wow. I don't have to regrind the same reputation over and over again. What a what a what a fucking what a salvation this is. It's so weird. And overall, I did like the combat. Even though I made the unholy choice of starting out as a Thaumaturge by mistake. With uh which has all of the appeal of leveling a frost mage on WoW. I level this frost on WoW. Just don't save it for when you have a better mate. Is this Jordan? Is this Jordan? No. Jordan's never tried Guild Wars 2 or ESO. This sounds like Jordan, though. Okay. I went on the epic adventure to prevent the Galleon Empire from creating a Megazord for the Power Rangers. I suppose you could call it an Omega Zord. I mean, you could, but you shouldn't. I met up with the Scions. I found the characters to be fairly bland at first. But the general story was solid enough to keep my attention. It was towards of the a end of the AR MSQ that I encountered the true beginning of this tale. I was questing and doing the final instance of a Realm Reborn when a message popped up in my whispers about joining a free company. Oh, we oh, we need a free company name. All right, we need a, a an FF free company name. Hit it live, live team. Wonderful live audience. We need a, a lovely... FF free company name. The Lala Fellas, the Crawlers, no. The Toad People. Yeah, I'm going with that actually. <laughs> the Toad People. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> About I'm joining the Toad People. <clears throat> now, uh, it was called the Toad People. It was listed as a social hangout free company. I have been watching Drama Time for years. I had also seen these things in MMOs before. I knew in advance this was probably a cesspool guild. That being said, people had co commented that FF14 is not like the others. FF14 is different. They're not like World of Warcraft. And the community is more than fine. There is a lot of bias to that message. Uh, there is definitely a lot of bias. <laughs> There's a lot of bias. So I joined it. I entered it with the knowledge that I would stay there until I had a decent grounding. And then I would jump to a different free company when I had a better idea of what I wanted out of this game. As a word of warning for any future players jumping into FF, do not do this. This is a really bad idea. Do not copy what happened to me. Enjoy the MMO first on your own with random encounters from players. And once you've found your feet, then think about joining a guild or a free company. If only you'd followed my advice. If only you did exactly what I did in Final Fantasy. I didn't join a free company until at the end of A Realm Reborn, at least. I'll admit, I am guilty. I should have listened to the warnings from my own brain, rather than putting faith in humanity to not be a particular brand of personalities. How bad was it? However, the Toad people had all of the hallmarks of a decent social guild. I joined. There were a ton of welcome messages. As expected, with FF14, there was a lot of uwu spam. <laughs> to which I gritted my teeth through, 
trying to put into the back of my head the weeb shitty anime trash game and put aside my biases and realize that actually these people were kind of okay i may have prejudged them and that was wrong of me i announced to the toad people i was entering heaven's ward and they rushed down to give me a nice mini welcoming ceremony it was honestly something i'd never seen in an mmo before which i found it really touching finally i understood what people meant by community and positivity and how much more of it there was than other mmos i started to engage with these people socially enjoyed most of the conversations some were a bit too out there for me especially when one of the members announced that he was buying an ishtola body pillow to finally put the the finishing touches to his man cave i don't like that yeah i don't like that i don't like that i don't like that (laughs) if that's the finishing touch i can only imagine what that room looks like if that's the the big finale it's most like that when you wish that you lacked the ability to read (laughs) however people can do whatever they want to do though i feel secondhand shame for the poor (laughs) who has to clean that pillowcase (laughs) you think it gets cleaned that's really cute that's really cute that you think someone cleans it i don't i'm telling you now nobody's cleaned it they haven't they haven't on a secondary note i also heard you have a body pillow of yourself no i don't no i don't it exists i certainly don't have one because it's disgusting and it's gone so yes no i don't so my heaven's ward journey continued i much prefer the narrative here some people call it overrated but I really love the Dragon Song War. Oh, did you follow Thancred's arc? It's very important in Heaven's Ward. According to OK Mage. One of the most important story arcs in Heaven's Ward. It's actually more important than Hraesvelga's story arc. Did you know that? I didn't realize that until today. When I saw her tier list. And she said that Hraesvelga is kind of just there. So, but Thancred... What a what an interesting story he had throughout Heaven's Ward. It was it was really kind of a big moment for us all. <clears throat> I loved the dynamics between Emmerich and the dragons. The more I engaged with Thorden, the more I enjoyed those subtle zealot bashing moments, with a lot of MMOs and RPGs steer away from. All in all, it felt like the antagonists had a decent purpose, a reason to exist rather than being I'm bad. <laughs> At this point, I became close to friends with another Viera called Kenethal. And another Viera called Puppy. Thanks, Bex. Kenethal was French and Puppy was German. Oh, no. <laughs> with me being English, we had a trifecta of nationalities who tend not to get along due to historical and political reasons. But we, <laughs> we were friends, and that's all that mattered. We cleared the content. I was the newbie, and Puppy was a savage ultimate veteran. Puppy convinced me to swap from Black Mage to Red Mage with a Warrior Alt, as they noted I was quite good at support roles, and that my tanking nature could be beneficial long term. I am now, of course, a Warrior Main Chad, so it was good advice. Kenethal was super focused on glams and G-posing, and introduced me to a modding tool called Anamnesis. Adamnesis. From what I could tell, this mod was mostly a softcore porn mod. (laughs) Which was a new idea for me in an MMO experience. (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) It's just used for posing better. (laughs) I'm sure. I'm sure. I refused to do the modding stuff because I had heard it was not allowed. They understood, which was nice, even though I'm half sure that they most likely put underwear on my character in their own screenshots and edited proportions. Why don't you just make your own VR? I don't get it. 
I don't get it. You've got a character. You can create whoever you want. Why are you taking pictures of other people and doing it? I don't get it. You could just make your own and make it look however the fuck you want. You can make it perfect. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, gamers will be gamers. <sighs> I'm a gamer. I'm not doing that. These guys aren't doing it. You're not doing that, are you guys? Let me just, a quick pop check. Are you guys, uh, you know. No? Surely not? Yes. <laughs> not all gamers. <laughs> Suspicious degenerates and scatter. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> I don't agree there's gamers be gamers. Aside from that, though, I worked out the dynamics of the toad people puppy was an officer kenneth R was a long-term member but something was quite odd the gm crystal was noticeably not online in fact just absent in general it seemed like puppy was the real leader of the toad people in the absence of crystal people have busy lives so i got it and moved on the rest of the free company seemed a mix of social gamers and a rank that was specific for the g posers to which I avoided those people. <laughs> and Raiders. All seemed well. <laughs> okay. A special rank for the G-posers. You get labeled. <laughs> we know what you're about. You stand over there. <laughs> you go over there. How oh no. However. Bex. Where is this going? It is when I joined the FC Discord that I understood the true nature of the Toad people. Now, I have been on MMO Discords before, and typically there is an NSFW channel, which is fair enough. They had a lot of NSFW channels. Like 12. If your guild needs to subcategorize its NSFW channels, there's a problem. If there's so much NSFW stuff going on that you need to start subcategorizing them so it can be like basically Pornhub, <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> that's a real issue. Naturally, I assumed it was due to the G posing squad and the NSFW porn mod stuff. So I just didn't click on them and decided it was best I kept to the social channels. <laughs> Gotta stay away from there. That's just being organized. Well, this one, of course, is for Vieira feet. This one, of course, is for Vieira thighs. Then, we, of course, we have, like, Vieira stomachs, Vieira chest, and so on and so forth. Uh, so we can cater to the specific needs of our players. Uh, and then, of course, we need to do the same again for the Ellison. No Lalafell things. Uh, but then we move it into, of course, male Ellison, female Ellison. I mean, honestly, once you get this ball rolling, it's really important that we do subcategorize into an appropriate, uh, an appropriate way. <clears throat> they had voice chats, which were mostly gamer-based, shockingly. A lot of fun stories, people's day-to-day -day lives. It was all quite normal, besides the obvious channels. But then I spotted another channel. That was called the meme channel. Now. Of course. I've been in gamer discords before. I understand the memes are usually full of memories. And fun things the guild has done. Or people posting shit stuff. I'm not above a shit post every now and then. As you can tell. I enjoy a good pun here and there. <sighs> However. What I immensely struggle with. Like most sane and rational people. Despite having a dark sense of humour. Is racist, sexist, any is-ist bashing wrapped up in the idea of it being funny. A tame joke about stereotypes is fine. Actively parading around shouting the N-word at the top of your lungs is just asking for trouble and not something I find funny. If you can imagine a slur, the meme channel was like the dictionary of slurs. It was all here. Uh, N-words, hard Fs, R-words, full-blown memes, Jewish references, African references, slavery being a lols references... It was the most incel shit I had ever walked into in my entire life. And there it was on full display, like a museum of incelarity. Jesus Christ. And you still not left, though. <laughs> you still haven't left. <clears throat> still not left, no? I actually had to take a step back. I felt like I was going to fall out of my chair that this was not only just sitting here, 
But this is the access they gave to people who had joined for less than five minutes. Yeah, well, come on in. <laughs> Let me just open the racist door. Uh, over there, you'll find bigotry. Uh, racism is to the left. Uh, we've also got some, like, uh, really, really dark stuff over here. Uh, if you want to go and check that up. Oh, you're into gay bashing? Well, that's just going to be uh, back corner to the right. Uh, but welcome. Welcome. And while you're here, why don't you browse our subcategorized levels of pornography uh, that we also have. Welcome to the guild. Hope you have a good time. <clears throat> Hell, I've seen discords close to this myself, but not this bad. On one hand, I saw the crawlers and preachers community and thought, wow, I hope every community is like that one. I mean, you don't want that either. <laughs> you do want to be able to walk into the toilets in some of your free companies. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> you don't want that either. It, it, it gets strange in there. It gets a little strange. <laughs> and on the other hand, I was faced with the crushing realization that you can't really escape the dark shroud of the internet. It haunts you and it will eventually find you. I've never been in a Discord that bad. And then again, I'm not, I'm, I'm not in that many Discords. At least ones that aren't organized. I approached Kennethal about it. <laughs> His response to my shock and horror as to what I'd found in their Discord was, that's how the told people roll. You either like it or you don't. If you don't like it, you should just mute the channel. But what you shouldn't do is be obnoxious and try and spoil other people's fun. Are you trying to take away our racism? We're just having fun. Are you, try are you, try are you trying to take away our bigotry? Wow. Very judgmental of you. That's very judgmental of you. If I want to have a place to go around and shit all over people... I should have that opportunity. And you to come in here to my home and tell me that I, have, I can't do that? That's unbelievably judgmental. You're a bad person. You're a bad person. <laughs> <clears throat> this stun locked me IRL. I'm all for people having fun. But you don't know who's behind the fucking screen. What if a minority member enters the Discord and sees this stuff? Whoa, 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 whoa. Who the fuck are you to care about other people's feelings? What an asshole, eh? What an, again, you're putting your shit on me? I don't think so. What if that's their whole for FF experience going forward? That in some sections, it's incredibly racist, sexist, homophobic. I've always had the belief that a community should hold everyone to account on certain things. That would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> that's a great ideal we're working towards. I'm sure we'll get there. I'm sure we will. Really cool idea. So, I called it out. I decided to make a bit of a stink about it. I brought it up in the FC chat and on the Discord that it was fucking disgusting. I got told to go fuck myself. <laughs> Among a bunch of other things which definitely were referenced from the meme channel. I realized that this is not my fight to win. <laughs> this is not my fight to win. This wasn't going to change and it wasn't going to get anywhere. However, <sighs> really... I did like some of the people in the Toad People because there were normal and sane people there and clearly didn't enjoy the aspect of the Discord as most had those channels muted. Are you for fucking real? Are you for fucking... Are you actually for real right now? You know he's still associated with them. Somebody's gonna report it. He's still associated... This is where you, you're telling... <laughs> this is where you're probably saying I should have left. Yeah. Yeah, we are. And I know right now some of you are wondering why I didn't. In truth, on reflection, I'm not really sure. Maybe out of a naive sense of I can fix them. I'm still quite ashamed that I didn't leave at this point. Even being minutely associated with such horrible stuff cringes me the fuck out now. Yeah. After that, though, things changed in the Toad People. It was during a free company daily roulette in the vault that things really opened up to me. I was learning to tank and Puppy was running through the dungeon with me along with two savage raiders who just wanted to clear it and move on with their day. I felt it'd be a good experience and that they'd have useful advice for me given their expertise. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, that would be nice too, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be really, really nice. I wasn't the best, but I was learning to tank in FF and I hadn't done this dungeon yet. With the mitigations, the little quirks, and how to pull every pack perfectly to wall to wall it. However, it was during the second boss that I made a cardinal sin. I pressed the mitigation during a boss fight out of newbiness. I increased my defenses by 30% and within seconds, a message appeared in the chat from one of the savage raiders. Use me, mate. Why are you using mitts? Is you a casual or something? And the floodgates opened. Puppy and the other two raiders howled like hyenas with their laughter while I sat there stunned. Then, like a nervous driver, I started making other mistakes while they were laughing, and they continued to mock me. Where are you taking that boss, mate? To Canada! Ha! <laughs> oh, man. The tank is facing the boss badly. Fucking hell, man. Where did we find her? You do know tanks can do DPS as well, right? You have heard about that. You do actually have to do some damage as the tank. What really made this worse, as they bashed on my gameplay, Puppy, my friend, was the worst of the bunch. This person who offered me good advice one-to-one -one was now absolutely shitting on me. And Puppy was an officer. At the end of the duty roulette, I stood my ground. I said, I had raiding experience in other MMOs that probably crap all over yours. But it was no use. It was like the guy was beyond saving. I left the group feeling horrible and went to Kenethal. I was upset. But I soon cheered up when Kenethal asked me and offered to do some nice social creative G-posing. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, is baby sad? Is baby sad? Come here. Come here. Baby sad. Come spend some time. Come sit on Kenethal's knee. Come on. Come sit on Kenethal's knee. Do you know what G-posing is? It'll cheer you right up. Cheer you right up. I, of course, decided then and there to avoid another part of the Toad people. The elites, as we called them. And started to move myself in the casuals with the G-posers. You moved to the pawn? You moved to the pawn? <laughs> it's safer. It's safer with the perverts. It's safer over there. <laughs> I reached Starblood. Crushed through a rebellion narrative. Honestly, Stormblood is really underrated. Nope. Oh, it's not. Post MSQ. Sure. But, in my opinion, though Dorma can be quite slow in places, the ending is crap, I agree. The post MSQ, though, is very high quality. I mean, when they sing the song, we could do without that, couldn't we? Yeah, all hold hands together, have a little sing song. We could do without that. <clears throat> I was hooked with the characters and the story. And through a December with fuck all else going on as my ed education was on a break for Christmas, I reached the promised land. I was riding home as I entered Shadowbringers. God, that song is so good. Just like the outstanding soundtrack, the expansion is equally outstanding. I get it. I totally get why people believe it is the best story told in MMOs and some single player RPGs as well. I'm not a huge cry merchant, but emotionally, anything with Ardbert broke me. And the final Emmett Selk moment with Ardbert's axe, it felt so good and so sad. So with that, I reached Endwalker. The t you stayed with these? You went, th you went through Stormblood, Shadowbringers, and Endwalker with the Toad people. <laughs> I reached Endwalker. The free company was changing. Chris Atul, the GM, had made a return, but not quite. He was still immensely inactive, but just popped in every now and then to say hi and then log off again. Puppy was raiding the new Savage at that point with his raiding friends. Kenethal, on the other hand, well, they had made a new friend, a new subject. Imbued was someone who had previously been in the FC, but left for some reason. Kenethal and Imbued were apparently very close friends and quickly organized an in-game wedding with two days of, within two days of Imbued coming back, inviting everyone in the FC to come. Bearing in mind that I'd been in the free company for a couple of months at this point, it all felt a bit weird to me. The wedding happened, the FF14 community thing happened, and everyone seemed very happy for the couple. However, it all seemed like a bit of a circle jerk, 
Rather than involving everyone and having fun, it seemed like attention whoring. Wow. Rude. Kind of rude. All the weddings I've been to in FF have been really cool. From that point onwards, though, Kenethal wanted little to do with me. I started to feel lost in the Toad people. So I just focused on playing Endwalker. I have to be honest, and this will trigger a lot of people in the chat, I thought the first half of Endwalker was pretty shit. But the second half carries it so hard and completes the storyline perfectly. A lot of people it says, says it makes Shadowbringers better, and I agree. Because the second half is more or less a direct continuation of the story of Shadowbringers. And it's the part you remember the most. I also want to be careful about being too critical of the first half of Endwalker, though. Because I played it when I felt lost in the FC. So maybe that had some influence on my perspective. That being said, Meteon was underdeveloped and felt like an artificial amping up of the stakes because they'd written themselves into a corner. But enough of that, I won't mention anything else. I mean... <laughs> Uh, guilty <laughs> guilty absolutely guilty so in the span of four months i had finished the entire msq of ff14 i had a lot of free time at this point i decided to go and try the different things that i had missed out on raiding trials duty roulettes even map completion the gold saucer with a couple of fc members was a good laugh to break up the monotony of struggling to understand the fashion challenge of the saucer I was a bit of a moron when it came to the details of the game. That's fair. It's a new MMO. There's a lot to learn. But for all this content, that feeling of dread lingered around the Toad people. It was very clicky. For instance, the Discord was arranged with Savage Raiders mostly being associates or friends rather than fully-fledged members of the Free Company, which may have explained the constant desire to post immensely offensive shit in Discord. They knew they'd get away with it because Crystal was fairly inactive and Puppy was taking part in it. Again, I should have left, I know. But let's cut to the chase. I did leave. I left because something happened that got under my skin. I could tolerate some shit posters and meme lords. I could deal with the vitriol of toxic elitists. What I can't put up with, though, is bullying. That is where I draw the line. As I'd hope most normal people would there was a member of the toad people called enos enos was a bit headstrong and liked to have an opinion on things they weren't toxic just like the sound of their own voice and needed someone to tell them when to shut the fuck up for the most part you could block out and ignore their essays but it wasn't that big of a deal when they went on some sort of paragraph andy moment one morning I logged into FF14, preparing to level some of my jobs. The first thing that I saw as I logged in was Kenethal and Puppy talking about Enos in the FC chat, along with a few other members, calling them a ton of slurs while Enos wasn't there. Oh. I asked what was going on. I assumed there must have been some kind of drama, but said it wasn't a justification for chatting behind someone's back and calling them all these names. Kenethal told me that Enos was annoying the fuck out of his friend imbued puppy and a few other members they mentioned that they were talking in voice chat on discord but there was no one in the discord voice channels they were empty i said i can't see you kennethal told me that they'd of course created a private server quite some time ago not to avoid the racism not to avoid the sexism not to avoid the bigotry not to avoid the pornography but just to avoid Enos, because he types too many paragraphs. So that's where they draw the line. I hope we're all in the in the good mindset here of exactly when they draw the line. It's there. That's it. It's too many words. It's far too many words. If it can't be put onto a caption of a picture, it is not worth reading. You're driving me nuts. They said I was welcome in the secret Discord. Would I like to join? No. I refuse, because if something's that big of a deal, shouldn't the officer be dealing with it if you're literally creating separate Discords to avoid individuals? Puppy was an officer. Rather than adding fuel to this fire, I told Kenethal to poke Christotel about it, as in the last couple of weeks, Christotel had become more active. Well, that's where I discovered the truth about Kenethal and Crystal. 
They fucking hated each other. What is this fucking... What is this free company? <laughs> what is going on? What is this free company? <laughs> Crystal felt like Kenethal was a drama and an attention whore, whilst Kenethal thought Crystal was the shittest leader and was carried by Puppy doing all the work. So... I poked another member to ask them about Crystal and Kenethal. And they told me that in the past, Crystal and Kenethal had had an enormous argument. And that ever since, Kenethal had been talking mad shit about Crystal in every voice comms he could get into. Kenethal would actively sit down with brand new members of the FC to explain how their GM was a complete piece of shit. <laughs> Often, those new members would leave within five minutes, but that did not stop Kenethal from inviting more people to sit down and listen to how much he hated Crystal. <laughs> Welcome, now you're here. Take a seat. <clears throat> and as a result, when Crystal found out that Kenethal was doing this, they felt the only way to avoid this hatred was to just not log in to the free company that they had created. At some point, right? At some point, I think my head is going to explode reading one of these tales. I can't give up the power. I have an FC. I must hold on to the power. I'm like the Empire in Star Wars. No matter how much happens, I must hold on to that power because I'm the GM. I'm the one in charge. I consider myself, audience, fairly sane and rational. We all do. Even body pillows. We all do. That's the problem. That's kind of the problem. Most of us consider ourselves to be fairly sane and rational. <laughs> but, you know... Things be happening. <laughs> Things be happening. Most of us do. <laughs> Most of us do. <clears throat> I thought to myself, right, so my GM Crystal runs an FC where they're too scared to log in because they're being shit mouthed. So they they have no backbone. And they should really just kick Kenethal if it's so bad you can't play your own game in your own FC. This power struggle was obvious to see. Kenethal and Puppy had the influence, but Crystal held on to control. And both sides hated each other and tried to push their brand of the free company onto the members. However, I wasn't interested in inter-guild politics. Not for me. I was more interested in what was happening with Enos. Now, in my previous guilds and communities that I've owned, I hold a very simple stance. No anonymity in incidents. If someone has an issue, they have to air it with the person first. If that fails, then you can take it to an officer to deal with your personal problems. I don't work on hearsay. I work on screenshots only. Good rule. Any alternative Discord servers that are created to ridicule someone are permabans. Any form of bullying is not tolerated at all. Nice and simple. So I applied these rules here. I went to Kenethal and told them to pack it in with regards to Enos... And they should all return to the FC's Discord and be civil. And that if they couldn't do that, they were equally as shitheads as whatever they were accusing Enos of doing. Kenethal told me to go fuck myself. <laughs> of course he did. Oh, really? Is that what you think should happen? Well, okay. Hold on. Let me check. Nope. Go fuck yourself. Sorry. I tried. I rolled. I got. Let me check again. Ah, same answer. Go fuck yourself. I'm sorry. Like, I'm tr I'm really trying to give a shit about your opinion. But, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. <clears throat> Kenethal told me to go fuck myself. I said that I should join their Discord because Enos is such a prick. He deserves to not be a part of the team. <laughs> he told you to go fuck yourself and then said join our Discord instead. It's an interesting gambit. It's an interesting gambit. Tell someone to go fuck themselves and then say, but you should join us. Right? No, for real, go fuck yourself. But also, why don't you join us in mocking this guy? Because he really does suck. I don't think you understand how much Enos sucks. I understand that you don't like bullying, but he really deserves it. He does. You know, just a terrible human being. <clears throat> so, I went with my next option. I went to the GM. I went to Crystal. 
I explained what was going on. And in the infinite wisdom of this particular GM, Crystal said, I can't be asked with these kinds of problems. Hmm. It's a different approach. Uh, it's tough. It's a tough situation to be in. It's a tough situation. <laughs> Crystal said they actually really don't care whether Enos had done something wrong or not. And actually told me, if you think Enos has done... Uh, if you think he's done something wrong, put it in the meme channel so other people know about it. So painful. So painful. I just personally could not tolerate the behavior on display. So, I ultimately decided it was time to leave. I just didn't need this. I wouldn't expect anyone else to stay. As soon as I left the Toad people, I was sent a DM by Kennethal telling me that they live-streamed our whole private conversations to their friends. Is that supposed to be like a threat? Or like a gotcha? You know what I did though, mate? I live streamed you trying to be a good person. That's what I did. I fucking got you, mate. I got you, mate. You know when you was asking us to stop bullying people? Live streamed it. Got you. Ah, you just got got, mate. I was broadcasting this on TikTok and whatever. Got him. <laughs> At that point, I knew 100% that, yeah, it was probably the right choice to leave. <laughs> I queried myself why I stuck with this guild for so long. I think at the time, I just wanted a sense of that FF14 community I'd been told about. Yeah. yeah. I went in brave. I wanted to throw myself in and get involved, expecting people to be normal, civilized human beings. I think I could be fairly forgiven. No. Oh, I think I can be fairly forgiven for not expecting to see that level of darkness in a guild. Because if you enter a community with preconceptions, you may as well not join at all. That is a big problem people have with joining guilds. They assume they're all going to be terrible. I want to see the good in people. I like to see the good in people as much as I can. Until someone shows me that they're bad. And I don't paint a whole community as villainous when it's a couple of bad apples who are flinging the shit. I spent the whole day weighing up my decision. By the time I'd fumbled my way through my thoughts, it was the evening. I teleported over to a certain crawler house. Oh no. Where a huge party was taking place. I saw DJs, dancing, memes, general fun and games. I saw Mike rolling up in a limo with a bunch of others. It was wild and wonderful and nothing like I'd seen in the game so far. It put a huge smile on my face after a long day of shit. I chilled there for a while, enjoying every moment until I had to go. Before I logged out that night after the beach party, I felt that I'd stumbled across a crap side of the community. That actually, the crawlers were just one of many communities that were good, and I was unlucky with the one I'd chosen first. I teleported to Limsa just to check some market things before bed. I loaded in, and it was actually empty. A couple of people running around, and that was it. Well, apart from the Lalafell Mafia, who was still on that bench four months later, the head honcho waddled up to me, looked me up and down. They said my glam was really nice and that <laughs> they liked the way I looked. Run. Run. Run fast. Run. Get away. Get away. For being approached in Limsa by the Lalafell Mafia telling you you look good, get the fuck away. I don't. Th <laughs> I didn't think the approval from a bunch of Asbo Lalafell would feel so redeeming, but I think it put the whole FC experience into perspective. So people of the jury... I do plead guilty for not leaving sooner and for ignoring the warnings to begin with. But is there any innocence in me? I personally think you're guilty of naivety. I think that's your true crime. At least, look, I'm old as fuck, right? I'm going to be 40 in the... year and a half. <laughs> it's going to suck. Uh... I've been in a lot of guilds. The warning signs are called warning signs for a reason. Just back out. Just back out. It's not worth it. Just go, oh, is this your guy's jam? Yeah, I'm out. And that's it. 
done. Easy game, easy life. Oh, you guys have like a whole bunch of Discord channels full of porn and racism and shit. Yeah, I'll just leave. I'll just go. <clears throat> the racism is the big clue. The bigotry is the big clue. The sexism is a big clue. Just get the hell out of there. That's easy game, easy life. Well, there you go. <clears throat> uh, okay, let's go. Uh, um. Oh. Meeting Guild Wars 2 Elitis. Oh, I kind of want this. We haven't had anything about the Guild Wars 2 Elitis. You got bad boons. Very bad boons. Your boon up time is trash. Big trash. Guild Wars 2 drama. There it is. Uh, and it's going to be the G, the Guild Wars 2 Elitis. Yeah, you can also find them in my chat when I'm uh, raiding. They will be here expressing how this boss is impossible due to our DPS. Killed every single boss. <sighs> you will find them uh, <clears throat> you'll you'll find them hanging out in our chat. <clears throat> okay. You people killed boss too. <laughs> hey Mike in the audience, chatters rejoice because I have a tale for you. A Guild Wars 2 tale, to be precise, of three very different raiding experiences. I've been following your blind raiding progression quite closely. It's all been quite fascinating and enjoyable to experience. But not all raids run so smoothly. Do our raids run smoothly? In fact, for a lot of us, raiding can be a daunting thing. Gathering a group of randos, mostly in the LFG, navigating the issues of kill proof and potential elitism in the community. However, along the way... We find moments of comedic genius and wild adventures beyond our expectations. Like you, Mike, I sought to experience blind raiding in Guild Wars 2. Oh, no. Yeah, you really do need to, like, be finding a blind team. It, 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 it's sad, but it rarely works without some sort of coordinated team. Otherwise, you're just, like... You're just the guy who sucks at the fight. <laughs> Unfortunately... You're just kind of the guy who sucks at the fight uh, and is getting hard carried and you don't really want to be that guy. You've got to be careful with uh, just imposing your blindness upon other people. <laughs> <clears throat> I was going to do this in the earlier wings. Finding some success in conquering the Veil vale Guardian and Gorse of All before wiping on the sloth in Wing 2 due to, due to a poor who couldn't understand the mushrooms despite flaunting his 200 LI in front of our faces. I don't know what that means. Get me on the lingo. What's 200 LI? Hmm. What's LI? Anybody know? Any Guild Wars 2 people know what it is? LI equals one boss kill. You get one LI per boss kill. Oh, is that something like actually linked in? <laughs> Legendary insights. So I have some of these, I guess. Flaunting is 200 LI in front of our faces. Clearly, this person was a DPS main. Ergo, peasant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the tale truly begins in Wing 6. Oh, can I read this? I'm about to step into Wing 6. Is this, is this safe, Bex? Are we safe? I haven't done Wing 6 yet. We've got 6 and 7 left. We're safe. Okay, Bex has given the all clear. So if I get spoiled, you know who to blame. Our tale truly begins in Wing 6 of all places. I was and still am blind to this raid. I have seen only the platform of the first boss and a handful of random abilities that I couldn't tell you what the fuck's going on. Instead, there was Rab. Rab, one of, one of Rab's first sentences when the group was made, that he was an alpha male with big dick energy. <laughs> well, he wouldn't lie. He wouldn't lie, would he? Right? <clears throat> he wouldn't lie. No, Rob would never lie. Because he's an alpha male. Which is a thing, apparently. So, there you go. There you go. Finally, a proper introduction. <clears throat> Self-described big dick energy. Alright. Now, I'm not one to judge people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one to judge people. But in this case... It was really hard not to. In our party of random, hopeful raiders and a semi-experienced leader, the alpha male, as he described himself again, proceeded to overrule the semi-experienced leader's advice. We pulled the boss, we wiped as the group decided to do different things, some people following the raid leader, 
and some people following the alpha male. As soon as his team died, the alpha male uh, called for a GG, and he stood beside us all and laughed. He literally emote laughed next to us, doing at emotes at the people who had GG'd first, and then proceeded to call the ones who died dog shit. I paid him no real notice, tried to figure out why we died. How do we not die next time? At this point, I clocked that our semi-experienced leader wasn't actually semi-experienced at all. Instead, they were just as newbie as the rest of us and claimed to have experience in order to put the group together. Ah, classic. Classic. Ah, that's a, that's, that's a tale as old as time. Yeah, 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 I know what's going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, join, join. I'm only inviting people, though, who have already done the fight. You know what I mean? Because I don't want us to, like, wipe all the time. So... Yeah, if you could let, let me know that you've done this fight, and then that's the only reason I'll bring you. Yeah, I've done this fight loads of times. Loads of times, mate. <clears throat> I appreciate the hustle, but honesty is the best policy when you're going to waste other people's time. The Guardian player, Rab, the alpha male, who in his feeble defense was clearly, actually, genuinely the most experienced player here, decided to, in his words, assert dominance. <laughs> I think this guy's hard trolling. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for me, the alpha male, to assert dominance. Okay? So everyone stay back while I assert dominance. Yeah, it sounds like he's fucking hard trolling. He said in his own words he's going to assert dominance over the members of this group. Specifically, a certain type of member in the group. Not casters, melee, or anything of the sort. No, something more direct and overt. In the squad chat, he poked the healer and queried, Tempest, are you a woman? Oh, no. This guy is fucking on a hard troll mission. He is just trying to trigger everybody in the fucking world. Our boy's on a mission to try and trigger as many people. The sad thing is, if he's serious, we'll see where it goes. Our Tempest was immediately uncomfortable. He was a woman. <laughs> Why? She replied. Rob, the alpha male, responded with all of his self-described riz. <laughs> I hate that I know what that means. In my defense as an old man, I had to ask chat what this means a few weeks ago. <clears throat> his response was, Don't listen to that pussy of a leader. Stick with me, girl, and you'll be fine. Oh, I imagine she's pregnant already. That's what I imagine. I, I imagine she read that and was immediately pregnant. 100%. Yeah, that's... that. No, no, I consider this a massive W. <laughs> I consider this a massive W. What a slammer. <laughs> In fact, I'm a little worried that the girls watching might also be pregnant. So remember, remember, look after yourselves out there. If he thought the musk was oozing off him, he was very wrong. Very, very wrong. Everyone in the group was stunned by this line. Our Tempest tried her best to remain composed as she replied, <laughs> I don't need an alpha male to make my decisions, thank you. <clears throat> now this is where i couldn't tell if he was trolling or not because he wasn't taking any of that <laughs> he said <laughs> alpha males don't take attitude like that unless it's from a fit girl are you fit That's the important part. Are you fit? <clears throat> At this point, I stepped in. No one should be male to feel uncomfortable in a video game, especially while I was trying to do something fun. I chirped up. Hey, pack it in. Stop making her uncomfortable. We're here to raid. If you want to flirt, try Tinder. The alpha male's anger boiled over. He fumed like a rampaging bull or a toddler. It was hard to tell over the text. The red mist had descended, and with a ferocity, he engaged Caps Lock. 
Fuck you, white knight. <laughs> oh, my heart. Oh, no. Someone take the arrow out. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Straight to the fucking chest. Unbelievable. Yeah, caps lock and a white knight burn. That's going to put you in the hospital for a week. <laughs> I started laughing. It was just unreal to witness this text. An immediate backlash because someone had dared to point out that his sleaziness. He couldn't accept someone crossing his alpha male persona that he built up. He continued typing though as I started ignoring ignoring me. DC. DC me, bro. DC. What does that mean? Oh, I didn't know what he meant. So I asked, what the fuck is DC? This drove him even more crazy. He started calling me an R word. Discord, bro. Send me your Discord. And then we'll see how tough you are. How does that work? <laughs> Send me your Discord. And then we'll see how tough you are. What does that even mean? I'm like curious now. I would absolutely send this guy my Discord. Like, awesome. Let's do it. <laughs> I replied, admittedly, with a little smirk on my face, typing away. So, is it tougher to DM in private rather than here? Why? Question mark. The rest of the group started to laugh. XD messages started flowing in. And the Tempest whispered me saying thank you for taking the attention off her. I knew I was doing the right thing at this point. Not to white knight, but to just be, you know, not a prick. Of course he started to become unhinged. Because gamers will be gamers. Is this the same author? Bex, is this the same author as the Lalafell Mafia? There's no way that phrase comes up twice. There's no fucking way. It is no way. And no, this isn't a gamer thing. It's not. This is not a gamer thing. Stop accusing all gamers of being body pillow alpha male chads, right? No, <laughs> that's not the way it goes. <laughs> do, you, do you see me, bro? Capital G gamer. I can't accept this slander against one against gamers. That's not true. Oh no. <clears throat> the response was actually even more surprising. DM nah bro. We are taking this to voice. You got something to say? Talk to me. I simply replied, no. <laughs> I'd rather I have bad things to do with my evening than talk to you. But if you're gonna shout into the void, I suggest you do it in a mirror so you can work on your alpha male riz. Oh <gasps> oof. Oh, that's cruel. That's cruel. You gotta work sockets and mirror and talk to your alpha male riz. Oh, that's that's hurtful. The reply isn't something that should be repeated and would most likely get Mike banned on Twitch, but it involved a lot of slurs before the moron was removed from my group. After the debacle, the group folded before a single tactic was discussed. Oh, F. We failed before the first boss mechanic, and to this day, Wing 6 remains a mystery to me. Aww. The Tempest thanked me deeply and asked me if the experience was a common thing in Guild Wars 2. I said that like in every MMO, there are some bad apples. It's just best not to let them spoil the rest. She optimistically moved on and we, changed, we exchanged details for the future. A few days later, I tried to raid again. This time, Wing 4, the Bastion of the Penitent. Now, I do know that one. Considered to be one of the most straightforward raids. Fuck you. We blitzed through Cairn, Mursa Overseer with a breeze. Samarog was a little bit tricky, but we killed it. I was feeling optimistic, but something was odd in these kills. There was this player, Jimmy, who was ignoring all the tactics. Jimmy spent the entire duration of the fight auto running into a wall without end, at least until AoE killed him. During Samurog, Jimmy was knocked back into the spears within 30 seconds and rage quit. <laughs> he came back when the boss was dead and somehow claimed his legendary insight. Perhaps he just DC'd and I give him the benefit? Well, we were staring at Daimos. The four chains were up and ready with a mysterious lore character imprisoned at the heart of a gloomy arena. It was quite an epic prologue, to be fair. I knew the fight was meant to be fairly tough, but this time I went in with a more experienced group, aka carried. What I meant to say is, I may or may not have been totally hard carried during this fight. 
Everyone accepted the ready check. We rushed in. We started fighting, chipping away at the chains. We were doing so very well. And then we teleported out of the dark realm with one chain remaining. We were looking for the portal to get inside. And our boy Jimmy had it. At the sight of the green circle, we all sped towards Jimmy. Jimmy dived off the arena and died with the portal. <laughs> we wiped it because either the raid bugged out due to the stupidity of Jimmy's plays. Or because that's genuinely what's supposed to happen. Regardless, we GG'd and tried to tell Jimmy that if they got the green circle, they should stand still and let us use it. Jimmy responded and said, Sorry, I didn't know what was going on. We said, all right, and called for another pull, maintaining a friendly cooperative air. In this pull, Jimmy did not get the portal mechanic. In fact, Jimmy got no mechanics. That's how Jimmy does it. Jimmy was stood there, unmoving like a statue. We asked him what he was doing, to which Jimmy declared, You guys told me not to move, so I'm doing what I is told. He then proceeded to die to the hand kiting, because our kiter had the vision of Stevie Wonder. We decided to wipe and explain to Jimmy what we meant. Again, Jimmy nodded and accepted. He said that they were so nice to him and other people had been really mean. So we called for another pull. Everyone clicked the ready check and we rushed into action. We cleared the pre-phase and started bashing our way through Dimos. We were midway through the first proper phase when our tank queried, Jimmy, are you okay? Collectively, we all glared at Jimmy. Jimmy was standing there, silently. We'd assumed he'd disconnected, but then he died as the ward came down, and of course, he wasn't present to block the room-wide attack. Now, I think you can all accept we were very patient with Jimmy. We explained to him what to do, and I think some people would have removed Jimmy by now, but we decided to give Jimmy another chance. We're going to kill this boss with Jimmy. <laughs> We felt like we were forming a bond with each other. Killing bosses we'd never done before. Well, some of us at least. Unfortunately though, on that pull, we wiped, we wiped again because the hand kiter wasn't very good and started doing zigzag patterns throughout the group. <laughs> we were about to kick Jimmy though because we were not just carrying me, but Jimmy wasn't doing anything. In fact, Jimmy hadn't replied for five minutes. We wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe his power had gone off. Maybe he was dealing with something IRL that couldn't wait. A phone call, maybe. But Jimmy wouldn't abandon us. Sure enough, Jimmy returned. And Jimmy typed a message that didn't kick him on sight, but made half of the group leave. Sorry about that. I had to go and take a shit. Is the boss not dead yet? Jimmy. That's how Jimmy does it. That's how Jimmy gets it done. That's a Jimmy maneuver. I have to admit, it made me laugh my ass off. I found the, I found the sheer bluntness absolutely hilarious. But others, well, they felt they were wasting their time with Jimmy. I can't blame them. We were nowhere near killing the boss, and Jimmy might AFK at any moment. I can only hope that he wiped better than we did. The group literally folded seconds later. Again... In just a few days, I had played two wings where the raid had just collapsed due to a singular hero. But you know what they say? The third time's a charm. Oh god, you went back in. My salvation came in the form of a raid you've recently done, Mike. The Hall of Chains. I don't know what it is. Considered by many to be one of the most difficult raids in the game. I assume it was wing five then. I thought I'd throw myself at the deep end to experience this for myself. I'd always loved a challenge, and perhaps after years of playing Guild Wars 2, I felt ready to maybe see what it was all about. I found a group that needed a druid healer. Alacrity, of course. None of this quickness nonsense for me. They were about halfway through, but I didn't care. It was blind progression, and I was here for it. We completed the statues, and I was having a degree of fun. It was the Statue of Darkness where we experienced some difficulties. Oh, the, as the light thrower seemed to have an obsession with lobbing the lights on top of the walls. Look, man, it's not as easy as it looks. Sometimes that shit be having a skew, right? There's wind to consider. Like, you've got to... You know what I mean? you got to... There's a lot happening when you're throwing them lights down. There's, there's a lot of things to consider. There's people stealing the lights. There's little goblins and stuff. There's a lot happening. <clears throat> Fortunately, despite this hiccup, we got through it. But then we arrived standing in front of Doom. We were ready to face this green Lich King monster. That on his throne. 
I felt like this was my challenge. As a novice druid healer surrounded by experienced raiders, we toiled away. We raged and applauded ourselves for every percent we got down. And after around 70 pulls, our raid leader suggested we do one more. This is my raid. You were in my raid. <laughs> this is absolutely my raid. This is totally my raid. Because that's when I said we're not raiding. We were stopping and we killed it. This is absolutely my raid. Who are you? The last pull, you know what? We killed it. We decimated Doom. We stood over his corpse and we cheered. I felt a massive sense of fulfillment as I helped topple the hardest boss I'd fought so far in Guild Wars 2. I even got so lucky as to get a staff, or rather a scythe from it. I think I can safely say that this is one of my gaming highlights of all time. Yeah, I'm trying to think who it could be. I mean, it was one of the healers, so there's only two. My advice to anyone watching this is keep trying. Find a group of friends who share your interests and keep pushing until you get your goals. Whether you kill a boss or not. But whatever you do, don't be a Jimmy. Don't... <laughs> don't be a Jimmy and try not to be an alpha male. And if you think you're an alpha male, don't tell anybody. Let them find out for <laughs> themselves. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my tale. And I hope to see you all in the chat very soon. I think we should give some massive shout outs to our boy Jimmy. Our boy Jimmy did some wonderful things there. Our boy Jimmy was carrying hardcore. Uh, oh, it was Olivia who got the staff, so it must be for Olivia then. God damn, man. Jimmy is a legend. I reworded it a little bit because I'm not sure. Um, actually, the, the genuine words of Jimmy when he came back were... I, I simplified it for the rest, for the international viewers. But for the English people, this will make a lot of sense. Soz, I was cracking out a shit. Where are we up to? <laughs> that is the actual line Jimmy used. I reworded it a bit to make it more international friendly. But the line was, Soz, I was cracking out a shit. Where are we? <laughs> That's Jimmy in a nutshell. Oi, 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 even better. Uh, we've got a choice. Ooh, should we save this one? Right, we've been going for like an hour and 20, haven't we? Yes, we better... We'll save this other story that Bex has said is fantastic uh, for another time because I do want to finish up Living World Season 4. So we'll call that the end of drama time for today. Absolutely fantastic tales. Super, super good. Uh, we save. Yeah, I've got two more stories that Bex has put in front of me, but we've already been going for like an hour and 20-ish. Uh, so I want to make sure... Uh, I want to make sure we get Living World Season 4 done today. Uh, so we'll do that. But fantastic. Absolutely fantastic.